Hello everybody, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we're looking at video number six, which is going to cover example six from our topic 9.7, right? At this point, we're like very knee deep into polar equations. We've been doing a lot of conversion, polar to rectangular, rectangular polar for both points and equations. If you think one thing that we haven't tried yet is to bridge the gap between polar to parametric, and that's what this video is all about. So if we take a look at our example six, as we see from my notes, it says to convert a graph in polar form to parametric form, we're going to use our good buddies, x equal r cosine theta, y equal r sine of theta. Notice that these things get a lot of use throughout both the parametric equation concepts and the polar equation concepts as well. So for this example six, we're going to do just that. And there's some really neat connections that you could make with these with your graphing calculator that we'll talk about here in a second. So first of all, for part A, r equal 4. If you don't know what the graph of this r equal 4 looks like before this video, I'm hoping that at the end of the video it's going to make a little bit more sense to you as I'd like to take a moment or two to sketch this guy. So for the conversion at least, what you're going to do is use the idea that indeed x is equal to the r value times the cosine function. So r equal 4 times the cosine of theta is half of your parametric equation and then the other half of your parametric equation would be 4 times the sine of theta. Now I want to kind of outline some things. As I said before, this is the parametric. This is really what we were supposed to do in this problem. We've answered the question. We're done. And this is the polar form. Now I know the question didn't ask for it, but just for kicks, I would like to go ahead and find the rectangular form. And to do that, we use a formula that we used in a previous video. Hopefully you remember it. It was that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Basically, it's just a, an adaptation of the Pythagorean theorem. But we probably would think of this maybe being written a little differently if we squared both sides as x squared plus y squared equals 16. And so I'm going to therefore call that the rectangular. Well, if I were to ask you, watching the video, what does the sketch look like of either one of these, whether you graphed it as polar, parametric, or rectangular, what do you think it looks like? Well, let's see if your observation is correct, if you had an observation. So we're going to move to the graphing calculator and find out. So to make this happen, I've moved over to my TI Inspire software. And what I've got right here is a very special program that I actually developed um, or wrote or coded in to graph polar graphing coordinates on top of rectangular coordinates. And I have it set up in a couple of different formats here. I have a pi over 4 spoke, and then in this page 1.2, which is the one I'm going to work from um, for all of these examples and moving forward, is the one that's built in a pi over 12 spoke. And basically what I wanted to do is graph that first polar equation, which was r equal 4. So notice I have to choose the polar option for this. You could do the same thing by using the TI-84. You can still graph in polar on that particular model. And boom, there's what I get. Hopefully that's what you expected. It is a circle. It has a radius of 4, hence r equal 4. And it is centered at the pole, which is kind of the origin of the polar axis. Now what if I went in and graph entried parametric? And I threw those two parametric equations in. If you remember, x was equal to r times the cosine of theta. And then we had, let's make sure that that theta takes. Let's try that again, you guys. It's not going to like that unless I put parentheses in. Okay. And then we'll try y equal 4 times the sine. And I'll tell you what, I'll actually use the sine expression this time of theta. And then, boom, if I hit enter, nothing seemed to happen. Well, it did happen. It's just that we have an issue here. And I wanted to show this to you because it's a really common mistake on the part of Inspire users. The polar 
is going to allow you to input theta as your independent variable. Of course, we didn't need to do that because 4 was a constant. But the calculator is going to struggle with parametric written like this because it's expecting functions in terms of t. Unless we change them, we want to make sure that that stays the, the, the way that we want it to. Now, when you hit enter, it's going to look like, oh, well, nothing happened. But I guarantee something did happen because I can now go into this and I could change its color to maybe red. And now we're going to see the difference between the two if I just click on this graph. There it is in blue. And if I click on this graph, there it is in the red. And notice that it kind of like stops short of graphing all of it because my 6.28 is simply an approximation of 2 pi. But if I actually typed in 2 pi, I might have a better chance of this going the full distance if I change that and maybe change my step size to be a little bit more precise than instead of 0.13. How about 0.05? I don't think that's going to take any extra time. And you'll notice I ate up a little bit more of that segment if I wanted to change it even more. I usually don't go much more precise than 0.01, but I think you're going to see that red uh, pixel or two cover up that region. So there we have it. Those are our two graphs. Now, if I were to go <clears throat> back in here to graph entry and graph, let's say, relation, remember we had x squared plus y squared equivalent to 16, which is, boom, yet another curve. Let's make this guy green. Let's have a lot of fun with this guy. And if we make him green, we can see that, boom, they're all the same graph, right? No matter which form you think of it in, we have the same equation. And that's kind of one of the things that I like my students to see and make these connections that polar and parametric and rectangular all have these equivalences. Let's go back to the example and take a look at part B. And here we go, r is equal to 4 sine of theta. Well, again, going to parametric, which is really the main thing that we need to do, just means that we write this as x equal r, which is our 4 sine of theta, and then we multiply that by cosine. So we're halfway done. And if we do that again for y, y is equal to r, 4 sine of theta, multiplied by another sign, at which point I could put a square in there and be okay with that. I'm not going to convert this to rectangular, not because it's impossible. It can be done. It's just a little bit trickier. you got to use some trig identities. It's really not part of the, the directions. But I am going to go back to the graphing calculator and sketch both of these to show that these are equivalent, but moreover, talk about a very important polar form that you need to get kind of familiar with. So here we are again on a new fresh page here with my template. I'm going to go into graph entry and polar and we're going to sketch it was 4 sine of theta if you remember correctly. 4 times the sine of theta. Now what do we think this looks like? And you may be surprised but it is going to sketch yet another circle. It's another circle, but notice that this circle is not centered at the pole. And notice that this circle does not have a radius of 4, but yet a diameter of 4, if you kind of move all the way across. Now, one of the things I like to point out to students is this. If we have a sine theta circle that's situated as such, what do you think a cosine theta graph would look like? And I know that this isn't part of the problem, but I wanted to show you this just briefly. Maybe predict what the graph is going to look like. Now let's check it out. Notice how it moves to the side. So basically we show symmetry around the horizontal axis for a cosine. Makes sense, right? Cosine and horizontal. But we have this vertical symmetry when we have it in terms of sine. So that's kind of important. Next thing I wanted to do is graph in parametric just to see if we agree. And remember our parametric equation, we had 4 times sine of, remember I got to use t in both cases. And then I believe our y was 4 times sine squared. To get a sine squared, we're going to have to place parentheses around the sign first. And if we sketch this, will it be that same circle? Lo and behold, it is. I know it doesn't quite look as dynamic because they share the same color, but I can change that very easily. And you can just click between each one and sort of highlight 
what they look like. And so, boom, we have the same circle. And notice we could have graphed this with rectangular, but you see that the the uh, center would be up there at probably 0, comma 2, and it would have that radius of 2 that we could work with. So it can be done, but it wasn't part of this particular problem. Let's take a look at part C. Part C is certainly one of the more interesting shapes here, but we kind of stay the course and we use the idea that x is going to equal r, which is 4 over cosine, times the cosine. Now what's going to happen here is that the cosines are going to cancel and we of course get x equal 4, which brings up an interesting point. What would the rectangular equation be? I mean, after all, we're only halfway into finding our parametric. Well, the rectangular one, I believe, is going to be x equal 4. Because if you would have cross multiplied from the very beginning, let's say your whole uh, motivation here was to find a rectangular for this one, by cross multiplying, you would get r cosine theta equal 4, and the r cosine theta happens to be x. And boom, rectangular equation achieved. No y is needed. But for the parametric, we still have to have a y, which makes us wonder, why? What role does this play? Well, the y is going to be the r, 4 over cosine, times sine, which means we could rewrite this in a simplified form as y equal 4 tangent theta. And these two together would comprise the parametric. Graphically, what does that mean? Let's take a look. So here we are at our graph one last time. We're going to go into our graph entry, change this to polar, and we're going to graph the original polar curve given to us, which was 4 over the cosine of theta. So here's what we get. Probably not too surprised by that. It is a vertical line, which is what the graph of x equal 4 would look like. And I probably don't need to graph x equal 4, but you know what? Why not? I'll go ahead and graph it. Now notice it's not a function. I could call it a relation. This is a really neat feature on the TI-84 that will allow you to graph vertical lines like that. And I might go ahead and call this guy, uh, let's give this guy, uh, how about that Dodger blue? So we can see that these two essentially are the same graph. But I'm more concerned about that parametric equation that we found. Remember him? So if I go in, Graph entry parametric, remember my parameters, I was x equal 4, and then the other one was x equal tangent of theta. So let's go ahead and sketch that tangent of theta. Boom, there he is. Let's give this guy a color that's going to make him stand out. I'm kind of in the mood for this orange. Let's go with that guy. So there is our parametric equation. Oh, parametric equations are going to work a lot better if I put a T there, right? Otherwise, I can't even change the graph to orange. Now I can. So there we go. But the question is, what's the role of this 4 tangent theta when I already know that x is equal to three, uh, 4 the whole time? Well, one great way to illustrate that is going into our wonderful trace feature and doing path plot, which is only an option on the TI Inspire 2. So if I plot this parametric equation, it knows to go to the correct one here. And I'm going to push play. Down here we see what the t value is. Down here we see what the ordered pair is. Let's push play, sit back, get our popcorn, watch the movie unfold. And we notice as t gets bigger, the dot just kind of goes up to oblivion. And, and then all of a sudden, it shows up again at the bottom, right, for other values of t. And then it rises steadily up to the top until I get to my apex of t, which I think uh, t will uh, go up to maybe about 10 or so before it decides to stop because that's the default settings. Or I'm sorry, 2 pi is the default settings for this particular. So basically what you saw was that point moving up with different y values all the time and then sort of orbiting back to the bottom of the screen and continuing with negative numbers values for y until it got into positive values of y. But meanwhile, it kept steady at the x value of 4. So there you go. Three interesting equations in polar that you can easily convert to parametric and plus a little bit of extra to see what the graphs look like. We've got several more graphs coming up to you in polar. Be sure to check them out. As always, thanks for joining.